Anyway, we're in our series, The Power of Rest. Uh, this is a very, very significant series. If you would say, Pastor Gary, if you would spend time telling me how the kingdom operated, I would have to aim at this series, really. It is so significant. We want to bring up our keynote scripture today, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9, that says, There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did his. When, when I ended my nine years of hopelessness, you know, I, I, I heard God say to me, Gary, you're in this mess because you never learned how my kingdom operates. You don't know how my system operates financially. I had an Old Testament degree. I've been in church for years, but I was missing something. I didn't know what he was talking about. And he had to teach me about the kingdom by implementing what he taught me out of debt in two and a half years, began to pay cash for our cars, built our dream home, paid it off, began to change life. It was like a light switch that came on and it was awesome. Awesome. Began to be able to give, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars away, prospering at a level that I never even dreamt of. And I'm not that good. So we're going to find out today how that happened. This scripture is the key to your future. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. That sounds Old Testament, but that is written in the book of Hebrews. That is yours, friend. It is yours. It's New Testament. We're going to help you dive into that because... Understanding this scripture, this scripture is going to change your life. Anyway, you grew up in the earth curse system. You grew up the mindset, that survival mindset, that I've got to find money or I've got to hoard money because having money was the only escape out of the rat race. Psalms 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you grew up in that same valley. You are, have been a professional warrior since you were born. You came into life with this concept. I've got to build a wall around my life somehow to protect me. I need to have enough money. I've got to have enough insurance policies. I've got to protect myself. And someday I'll find a place of rest when I finally get all the blocks in place and I feel safe and secure. Is that right? That's how we are raised because we live in the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of fear. And so it's a, it's a survival mindset. It's running, painful toil and sweat. It's running. And Jesus mentions this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. He says, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the unbelievers, people who have no concept of who God is, his system, run, painful toil and sweat after all of these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given or some versions say added to you as well. Now, seek first the kingdom. Learn how the kingdom operates, how the laws of the kingdom operate. And what the king, kingdom means king's dominion, what the king says is right. His righteousness. His righteousness. What is life from God's perspective supposed to look like? What does heaven have in it? Seek first his kingdom. Learn how it operates. Learn righteousness so you can discern what is not of God, and discern what is of God. And as you learn his way of living, all of these things shall be added. No, no mention of painful toil and sweat. Added to your life. Amen. Two different laws, two different systems. An airplane flies. It does not cancel gravity. It supersedes it with a new law. You got that? The kingdom of God supersedes the earth realm, the earth curse system, but it's totally foreign to you because you were raised here. I mean, if you look at the story in Luke chapter 5 of James and John and those guys fishing and catching so many, well, they fished all night and couldn't catch anything, and then they catch so many fish, two boats sink almost. That is how that happened. There was no painful toil and sweat in that situation except just to harvest. What about Jesus feeding the 5,000? There was no painful toil and sweat in that situation. How did that happen? New laws, new kingdom, new operations. That's what God is trying to tell me. Gary, you've got to learn the new system, the new kingdom method of living life. And so do you. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. That's you. For anyone, that's you who enters God's rest, also rest from his own work just as God did his. What does that mean? Genesis chapter 2 will answer that question. Glad you asked. 
Verse number one, thus the heavens and earth were, help me out, completed in all of their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he'd been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. Was he tired? Why did he rest? Finished, completed, finished. Man was made at the end of the sixth day of creation, designed to be lived in the, to live in the seventh day. Where everything's complete, everything's finished, everything's there for man to live in the earth, correct? So with that mindset, let's go back to our scripture and let it talk to you differently. There remains then a Sabbath rest. What could they not do on the Sabbath? Painful toil and sweat. There remains a Sabbath rest, an escape from the earth cursed painful toil and sweat system for the people of God, for anyone who enters God's rest. He wasn't tired, he was finished. Anyone who enters into the complete finished work of God also rests from his own painful toil and sweat. Why? Because everything's already there. Just as God did his. I'll get it later. You got that. There remains a Sabbath rest, a way of escape for you, my friend, if you'll enter into God's finished work. Now, Adam lost the finished work. We're gonna find out today that Jesus brought it back. It says also that God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Blessed means to separate or sanctify it. And so the blessing is the seventh day. Living in the seventh day, everything complete, everything finished. The Sabbath day, let's talk about the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day, you grew up in the American church culture, which is typically Sunday. But some churches celebrate Saturday as the Sabbath. Uh, the Jews, you know, sunset Friday, sunset Saturday. I mean, where is the Sabbath day at? Good question. But in American churches, we think of the Sabbath as Sunday and it's going to church. And it's God's day. It's a religious day. We do things for God. We feel guilty if you miss church. It's God's holy day, right? Or is it? Why did God make the Sabbath day? Two reasons. Number one, it was a picture of what Adam lost and God was going to restore. Number two, it was a day that caused man to stop. Remember, he's now in survival mode, painful toil and sweat. Anything he would have would be by his own doing. So it forced him to stop or he would run every day. It stopped him and put his focus back on God and reminded him that God was his source and that God was going to restore someday that way of life that was above survival. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.